Welcome, welcome. This is Dee with the Single Mom Unguided Life, where I try to navigate through finances, motherhood, being single, and everything in between. And I take you guys along on that journey. Today's video is my emergency fund in debt update. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. So as always, I start with my emergency fund worksheet. This worksheet guides me to make sure that I'm staying on task for the items that is needed to fund this savings account, as well as if I need to make any type of adjustments. So I have decided to make an adjustment to maintenance. Because I am using a side gig that requires my car, I want to bump up the maintenance and include not only just my weekly gas or bi-weekly gas, but as well as my month gas amount. So that's why I bumped that up $120 from last month. That brought the transportation category up to $604.14. And then in turn, the total that I would need monthly will be $2,246.86, okay? So let's go ahead, we're gonna move on to our emergency fund progress sheet. So this sheet lets me know what I am doing month to month, as well as if I'm meeting these goals to have this savings account be fully funded for emergencies. So as always, we start with the goal. So the one month goal we have is $2,246.86. So we're going to take that $2,246.86, we're going to times it by three. That gives us a three-month goal of $6,740.58. And we're just going to times that by two, because that's going to give us six months of goal of $13,481.16. Okay? So... Where are we at in this journey? So, so far, I've saved $2,746.32, okay? And how I fill this form out to see where I'm at in this progress is first, I look at the first month and I ask myself, have I met this goal? If I have met the goal, I place a check, which I have which means that I do not need anything for this goal. So I'm just gonna put a fat zero there, and there we go. Now for the three months progress, or goal, excuse me, have I met that goal? No, so I put an X. What do I actually need to meet that goal? So I take the $6,740.58, I minus $2,746.32 and that gives me a total of $3,994.26 that is still needed to reach the three month goal. Then I go through the same thing. I determine if I met the six month goal. I have not. I take the total amount for the six month goal and I minus what I currently have towards this particular savings. And I actually need $10,734.84 to fund this emergency account. So this is where I'm sitting at right now. If you're new to my channel, this year I have been just focusing on decreasing my debt while still saving towards this goal. And then in 2021, I'm going to rock this out more to make sure I'm fully funded before I start putting more towards debt than I have been towards saving. So, yep, this is where we're at for right now. We are going to go ahead and get set up for our monthly debt and we're gonna, monthly debt update and we're gonna see where we're at and with that progress. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> and I gotta say welcome back because I had a call interruption and it is actually several hours down the line. So let's go ahead and finish this off at this time. 
So now to the monthly debt update. We have to start with the last update we did because in the video there was some calculation mistakes and even though I corrected them, they were still wrong. And so after looking at this again, preparing for this upcoming update, I found the issue was that I wasn't consistent with the methods that I was applying. And that's what you have to do, especially with when you're learning to budget and you're trying to get out of debt. Not every plan works for everyone in every situation. Therefore, you have to tailor it to your situation. And also, you got to understand it prior to. So, the issue that I had was for credit card number one, the total purchases for 2020 was $240.76. I made a purchase in March for 30 excuse me, in April for $31.05. I paid it off in May. And then I made the purchase in the end of July of $209.71. So that's why in August, the total purchases were $240.76. Because whenever this number comes into play, the total number, it's always the last day of the month before. So I did that fine. Now the second one was where the hiccup was. As of July 31st, I did have three purchases versus two that I kept trying to figure out about. I had a purchase of $99 in March. Then I had a purchase in the end of March of 690, excuse me, of $437.63. And then I had a purchase at the end of July of 155. So that total is actually $691.63. The reason why it was an issue was because I was not carrying this ending balance over to the total. When, because this actual item that I purchased was given to someone in August. So I kept attaching this purchase to August versus then attaching it to July. So I checked all the numbers and I set up a clear method of what will be represented in this section. So this will show my total purchases for the year. And then everything here will be monthly status. Now, because of this change, this number changed. So the grand total, $19,617.13. Now for this, I started with like paying debt or looking at my debt more so around June, okay? Now, I've always been paying debt off since the beginning of the year, but I started to look at it more around June. So I decided, the way that I was actually tracking my debt was kind of like me showing I paid, me showing the ending balance, and so on and so forth, but it was no clear understanding of what really was going on. So that's why I like this sheet from Jennifer Bleacher at Life in Envelopes because this gives me a better picture. Now, we're in regards to this number. I decided I'm not going to go back to see where I started as far as debt-wise. I am just going to say that I, for the year of 2020, had over $20,000 worth of debt. But this will be the number that will be following me since since June, okay? So when I updated this number, this number updated as well. So I end up actually paying off since June to August, $1,849.75. I checked all these numbers and we are set. And I have a clear understanding. And of course, you know, I probably got my sticky note there. So I know exactly what should go where. Okay. So we're good with that. So now this is the new updated sheet. I've already filled out the debts themselves. The two debts I've already paid off because I have not made any purchases in the month of August. As of the last day of August, the remaining 
balances for the total purchases were 240.76 and 691.63. So that's the same information from before. Additionally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the grand total here of 19,617 and 13 cent because I know that that's going to be carried over as well. So let's go ahead and fill out our starting balances, which we're using the ending balance from the last sheet. And so I can just throw it up here and we can kind of mirror it right now. So 484.83 for um, 401k line one. balance of last month of $17,767.38 and therefore that's my starting balance for this update. So I'm going to go ahead and place that to the side. So now I know for this month I started with starting balance was $17,767.38. All right so let's go ahead and let's see what we've been doing thus far. So for loan one, I made a extra payment of $414.97 and I made two normal payments, which comes out of my gross pay. Therefore, my total payment that I actually made for since the last check-in was $451.85. Okay, now for my medical loan, I did my regular payment of $60.58. For my 401k loan three, um, it was a regular payment of $54.12. For the 401k loan two, it was $52.23. For the car loan, it was $280.14. And then for the credit card one, it was 35. And then for credit card two, it was 155. Okay. So now let's talk about the interest. So the interest for the loan was $2.43. The interest for the medical loan was $9.32. For the... 401k loan three, it was $11.75. For 401k two, it was $11.94. For the car loan, it was $146.44. There is no interest due on this credit card, nor no interest due on that credit card. Okay. So let's go ahead and Let's see where we're fair with everything, okay? So, as far as this, the loans, the 401k loans, I know that I spoke before explaining that what I pay into is what comes back to me. But I'm still paying off just the principal. That's what's being reflected. So, I, at this time, I'm no longer going to keep saying that this is coming back to me because and actually, you don't see it. So let's do um, 451, excuse me, 484, 83. We're going to minus $451.85. And then we're going to add the interest back to this. So that's $2.43. So the ending balance was $35.41. What I actually paid was four fifty one eighty five minus two forty three, and that's that four forty. Oh, excuse me, four forty nine forty two. So that's actually what I paid, and this is actually what I gained. Though it's added back, like I said, that I'm gaining that. 
So as far as the medical loan, it starts sixty fifty eight. The interest on that I took away from that. So the principal that I paid was fifty one twenty six. Then for the next four one k loan, so it's the same thing. Is that we paid the fifty four twelve, and we're actually going to minus the eleven seventy five. So that's forty two thirty seven. 52.23 minus 11.94, so I paid 40.29. 280.14 minus 146.44, so 133.70 went towards principal. 35 went towards principal, and 155 went towards my principal. So what does that mean for my ending balances? So we have 12, 10, 66 minus 51.26, so that's 11.59.40. Then we have... 1580 23 minus 4237 so that's 153786 then we have 160575 minus 4029 so that's 15645 46 then we have 13370 so that's twelve thousand three hundred eighty seven dollars and fifty cent now for the ending balance of the first credit card it is 17471 and then the ending balance for the second credit card is actually zero because I pay that off so let me go ahead and see three five four one eleven five nine point four fifteen thirty one seven eighty six. Fifteen sixty five forty six one two three eight seven point five one seven four seven one. All right, so we have sixteen thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and thirty four cent. So we have that is our ending balance. So we we'll just transfer that information to both rows in this column. So what? How much that have we paid off this month? Nine hundred seven dollars and four cent. How much have we paid off since we started tracking? That's $2,756.79. So I just want to go ahead and check this and make sure this amount is right. And how I'm going to check this is actually just going to total these columns up. So we have five. I am so glad that there was no mistakes and that I did go ahead and look over August. So going forward, I have a plan set and all the numbers are correct. Additionally, I am so happy that I was able to pay off almost a thousand dollars worth of debt just within this month. So slow, but progress. All right. So they check out. So we good to go. So this is where I'm at at this point here. Right now we're working on the first 401k loan. I do have the $35.41 remaining. And the only reason why it's remaining is because I'm allowing for it to be still deducted from my gross pay. So there wouldn't be any discrepancies between my employer and the servicer of the 401k where either my employer is taking more out because they don't know that they need to stop or the servicer is end up sending me additional checks because of that. So I decided to pay the amount up until the point of the last two ch um, checks for this month. So by the end of the month, this should be gone and totally paid for. We're currently working on the medical loan with still no plan of attack. But we're still making our minimum payments and we're still keeping this in the front. Um, for us to focus on so I thank you guys for watching if you can go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe if you can share this share this with your friends family and co-workers peace out